Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. The vanity code to add it on the Roku website is one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Same thing on iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, from time to time, fighters will actually contact me privately. Not often, just once in a while. And they'll try to set me straight on comments I've said about them in videos. Right? Let me just say this. I love boxing. Just because I'm making uh, challenging comments here online, um, listing opinions as to strengths and weaknesses and stuff like that, um, doesn't mean I don't have the deepest respect for any man who hops in the ring and risks it all in the sport of boxing. Right? I have the utmost respect for boxers. Sometimes my opinions are dead wrong. I did pick Oscar De La Hoya over Manny Pacquiao in probably my most high profile fight here online. Right? So let me just say this. For years I've had what I thought was public knowledge, an open invitation to any fighter that I talk about in a video. Right? If you're a fighter who I've mentioned in a video and analyzing your fight, and if you feel that I'm way off base, either before or after the fight, and you want to make a response video, right, where you address whatever I've said, or you just want to connect with fans to dispel misperceptions about yourself, go ahead and send me that video, right, and I will post it here on my YouTube channel page unedited okay I'm not someone who wants to interview fighters that's not my deal right all I'm trying to do is to analyze fights really from a gambling and sport perspective right I'm not really someone who's looking for access to fighters but rather than hit me up privately on Twitter to say hey Dwyer you're full of you know what you know I'm a better fighter than you say I am Go ahead and connect directly with your fans. Connect directly with the YouTube boxing community. Right? You can post a video yourself. Just send me a copy of it. And so I can post it on the YouTube channel page. And people will literally get unedited your point of view. Right? Now that's the first thing. I've encouraged the fighter who recently contacted me privately to send me a video. Right? Just make sure you're in the video, not representatives of you, right? I want to hear your point of view. Really, this site is really for people who love boxing, right? Many of them are not really that interested in my point of view. They just want to know what fights are coming up and get some idea of fight styles, right? If you want to discuss your own fight style, if you want to correct misinformation, go ahead and send me the video. The easy email address for me, for everyone to remember, is Dwyer at RichardDwyer.com. Right? Again, Dwyer at RichardDwyer.com. That's intended for fighters. Please, if you're selling boxing gloves or something, don't use that email address. Let's talk about another thing. I posted a video here um, after Terrence Crawford's masterful performance over Ray Beltran, a fighter who I had actually picked to beat Ricky Burns, right? They call that fight a draw or something like that. But, um, you know, I think highly of Ray Beltran, right? I did not make a video on the Crawford-Ray Beltran fight. I only made a post-fight video. And uh, in that video, I pointed out that Crawford really is one of the sport's best fighters, right? Crawford has a unique style where he's able to shoot jabs with both hands, Right, and he quite frankly would be a problem for you know any low volume older fighter because Crawford would be able to be active from the outside. Also, Crawford is very smooth, very slick defensively, 
people don't seem to realize that even though Crawford has been fighting at 135, Crawford could easily fight at welterweight because Crawford apparently walks around close to 150. Right, so Crawford should be in play at junior welter and at welter. Now the real action for that video came from YouTube Nation in the comments. Right, that video seemed to strike a nerve, sometimes a bad nerve, with some viewers. Right now, I encourage everyone to read through the comments. Let me just summarize some of the comments. You know, boxing's a snapshot sport. Right? When we say, hey, this guy is overrated, I'm really talking about overrated today at this moment. I'm not making a judgment on the guy's entire career, anything the guy has done in the past. Right? And so if I were to say Guillermo Jones is overrated, you know, I'm not making a statement on Guillermo Jones from five years ago. I'm talking about him today. So, I made a statement about a very popular fighter, right? He's arguably one of the most popular fighters in the sport. He carries with him one of the biggest fan bases, and that's Manny Pacquiao. I made the point that, in my opinion, versus... Terence Crawford, who I would take over Pacquiao, right? I thought Pacquiao was overrated. In other words, for gamblers watching this video, the idea is if a Pacquiao-Crawford fight's announced, Las Vegas would probably have Pacquiao as the big favorite, especially now. Since Pacquiao knocked down Chris Algieri several times in their last bout, and since Algieri went into that fight unbeaten, Right, and since Algeria had beaten, at least according to the judges, Ruchlin Provotnikov in his prior fight and actually had a belt going into the Pacquiao fight. Right, so some people left me comments. They said, How dare you basically say that Manny Pacquiao is overrated, given everything Manny Pacquiao has accomplished in his career? Look, I'm not critiquing Manny Pacquiao from 2009 or 2010. Right? I'm talking about Manny Pacquiao today versus, let's say, someone like Terence Crawford, who many people might not have heard about. Right? My point is simply recognize the guys who are a little bit overvalued versus some of their peers. Right? A fighter doesn't have to be popular to be good. Right? In that video, I also mentioned Adrian Broner. Now, this is not to suggest that Pacquiao and Broner can't be world-class competition, right? If people study my videos here online, they're going to see that I've been complimentary to both guys. I've taken Manny Pacquiao in big fights. I took Manny Pacquiao over Ricky Hatton. I took Manny Pacquiao over Miguel Cotto. Cotto right now is the middleweight champion, right? I've taken Adrian Broner in big fights. I've even taken Adrian Broner when I shouldn't have taken Adrian Broner, right? Adrian Broner against Marcos Maidana. Right? The point is simply, style-wise, neither guy has a style that would be able to cope with Terrence Crawford's style. Right? That's the only point I'm making. Right? I'm not saying that neither guy is worthy of fame and adulation. I'm not saying that either guy has, you know, uh, been given freebies in the past. All I'm saying is that boxing is rock, paper, scissors, right? Manny Pacquiao is one-handed in my opinion. He's really left-hand dominant, right? I encourage people to read the comments of Juan Manuel Marquez, who's been a Pacquiao opponent many times on Pacquiao's strengths and weaknesses, including a recent interview with him that was posted on BoxingScene.com. As for Broner, we know Broner. Likes to have a raised shoulder. We know he doesn't move that well in the ring because he has his feet wide apart. He wants to be flat-footed so he can generate power shots. Right? That would make him vulnerable to a guy who moves better than him and who's ambidextrous like Terrence Crawford. Right? The point is Crawford, when he needs to, can literally change to a southpaw stance and everything stays intact. In other words, he's still 
great defensively out of a southpaw stance, just like he's great defensively out of an orthodox stance. Right? Let me say this too. I praise Terence Crawford. Someone else left a post here saying, hey Dwyer, you're too biased toward American fighters. Right? And they mentioned, right, some criticism I leveled against Gennady Golovkin and against Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Well, let me just say this. Power punchers look great. First off, I've praised Gennady Golovkin in the past. Right? I can tell you I posted a video once where I was talking about Gennady Golovkin and someone said, hey, who is this guy? Right? I've praised Gennady Golovkin for years here online. But understand, my praise of Gennady Golovkin is not going to give him great defense. Right? When I'm here talking about Gennady Golovkin, I'm talking about specific things he does in the ring. I'm not here belittling his punching power. I'm not here, you know, saying he got gifts in any fight. Right? My point is simply, Gennady Golovkin defensively isn't on par with a Terrence Crawford. Now you could believe that Gennady Golovkin, if they were the same weight, and keep in mind, Golovkin's the middleweight champion, right? Terence Crawford was the champion at 135, lightweight. There's a huge gap between them, right? All I'm saying is that in terms of just skills in the ring and ability to avoid getting hit, right? Gennady Golovkin isn't on par with the great defensive fighters out there, right? You know what? I'm amazed when people claim that I'm biased toward American fighters because at different times I've heard that I'm biased toward British fighters, I'm biased toward Ukrainian fighters, I'm biased toward Australian fighters, I'm biased toward Mexican fighters, I'm biased toward Canadian fighters. You know, sooner or later someone's going to realize that the sport is global. Right? I've been here online, for example, talking about how I feel Amir Khan would pose a very stiff challenge for Floyd Mayweather. Right Now, Mayweather's African-American like me. Amir Khan, the last time I checked, isn't American, he's British. Right? The point is, let's just follow the talent. We don't have to make this a battle of, you know, uh, nationalities, uh, citizenship and stuff like that. Who cares about any of that stuff? Right? I'm just interested in who beats who. You know, I have nothing against, let's say, Gennady Golovkin. I'm not even sure if I know where Gennady Golovkin's from. Right? But when I'm critiquing his fights, I am going to talk about how he looks open for counters. I am going to talk about how he doesn't have a lot of experience going deep in fights. I am going to talk about how Kasim Uma was on the downswing in his career. You can look it up and double check it. Right? He had lost some fights. Then he fought Gennady Golovkin and that was a competitive fight. Golovkin looked bad. Golovkin looked limited. That's not to say Golovkin's not world class with punching power that's pound for pound. Right? What that is saying, though, is that if we're talking about skills, if we're talking about whether a guy is hard to hit, Golovkin's not on that list. Let's talk about Vladimir Klitschko. You know, I'm a Klitschko fan. Right? Me pointing out that Klitschko doesn't go to the body that much is just stating what's obvious to people who watch Klitschko's fights. Right? Klitschko isn't a big-time body puncher. That's just reality. Right? I mean, you know, I'm not here singling out Vladimir Klitschko. Keep in mind, at different times I've said here online that it's my view that his brother, Vitaly Klitschko, is the best heavyweight of the post-Lennox Lewis era. I don't have any axe to grind with the Klitschko family. Right? Not if I'm praising Big Brother. 
right? But let's realize that the sport of boxing has had a long history. There have been great heavyweights out there, right? Can we agree that there have been heavyweights who go to the body better than Vladimir Klitschko does or than Ali does, right? People view Ali as the greatest. Look at Ali films. He hardly ever goes to the body. Right? Take a look at Vladimir Klitschko, too. A lot of people, until recently, myself among them, viewed Klitschko as hopelessly cautious early in fights. Right? Didn't really trust his instincts. Always was in a shell. Never really opened up. Right? If you want to see someone frustrated with Klitschko not opening up in fights, Go back to the film of the Sultan Abragamov fight involving Vladimir Klitschko and listen to Klitschko's corner. Go back to the first Tony Thompson fight and listen to Klitschko's corner, right? Emmanuel Stewart, right? A guy who, understand, before he is involved with Vladimir Klitschko, Stewart was actually in Lennox Lewis's corner. Before Lewis, Stewart was in Thomas the Hitman Hearns' corner for big fights, right? Hearns Leonard, Hearns Hagler, right? Just Google Emmanuel Stewart's comments about Vladimir Klitschko being a bit tentative, right? And so look, that's not to say Vladimir Klitschko isn't legitimately the heavyweight champion of the world right now. In my opinion, as I've said in other videos, there's only one heavyweight champion, and it's Vladimir Klitschko. But if we're here talking about skills, then let's talk about skills. Right? Understand, underdogs win fights. Right? When the bell rings, titles are up in the air. Certain styles beat other styles. Right? certain holes in a person's game will become apparent in big matches. Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao's trainer, after the Eric Morales fight, the fight Pacquiao lost, look it up, right? Openly talked about how Pacquiao needed to develop more of a right hand. That's Pacquiao's own trainer, right? You can Google these interviews. When I say it here online, everyone is startled, right? Look, the bottom line is this. Sometimes the truth is startling, right? While we admire these boxers, while we, you know, admire our idols, let's at least be honest with ourselves, right? If I say Floyd Mayweather doesn't have a big punch, and has only knocked out Victor Ortiz recently. Am I being unfair to Mayweather or am I being factual? Right? And understand, Mayweather is a great fighter. Right? All of us have holes in our game. If you're a fighter and I've talked about you and you feel I'm being unfair and that I have holes in my game and analyzing your style, feel free to break me off a YouTube video. You can post it in your own YouTube account. Just send me a copy and I'll post it on my account. Right? I'm not big on hunting down fighters and trying to interview them. But if you want an unedited response to any video that I make, feel free to send it to me and I'll post it here online. You don't have to track me down on Twitter. You can actually post it right here in this forum in my YouTube account. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.